welcome everyone to another mod spotlight and today we are gonna cover an awesome mod called modular force field system aka mffs by thunder dark this mod is an addition to industrial craft 2 i'm sure you already heard of it but today it's actually time to have a closer look at its functionalities and how you can bend the force fields to your will so this mod is kind of an endgame mod as you will require a lot of items in order to produce all of these machines. Especially if you are playing with Greg Tech hard mode, it's going to be a pain in the freaking butt to get all of these materials going. So keep that in mind, you cannot do this from the start of your game, but eventually you will be able to. So this mod only comes with one ore, namely the Monocid ore. You will get the block when mining it, so you will have to process it in either a macerator to get 8 for cesium, a pulverizer which will yield the same amount, or any type of furnace which will only give you 4 for cesium. So it's definitely better to process it in uh, those ways. The forcesium can be used, for instance, in a mass fabricator, but we are mainly going to focus on the extractor, where it will be responsible to create force field energy. While playing around with complex mods and complicated systems like that, it is always required to have an add-on such as any eye to show you the recipes. So I highly recommend you to have this at your disposal, which means I'm not going to waste too much time showing you the recipes. But you can see, for instance, for the extractor, which we are going to have a look at right now, we need also these force energy crystals, which are made with forcesium as well. So the MFFS extractor is actually used to simply convert build craft, industrial craft or universal electricity energy into force field energy right there in its interface. Now the interface may be a little bit overwhelming such as many of those guys but it is actually really simple and there's not many mistakes that you can actually make. So first of all let's have a look at the uh, energy supply. You of course have to supply it with some kind of energy. It can also take high voltage energy as you can see from this MFSU. It can take a package of 512 units per tick easily. I'm not sure at which point it will explode though. Up here we have a slot for the forcesium, so it will actually use the forcesium in order to create the force field energy together with the industrial craft energy. Depending on your force fields and how much energy you use, you will soon realize that the forcesium is not used up very quickly. But we still want a way to store a lot more forcesium in this machine so it can keep going for quite a while, especially when you are on servers where the chunks might be loaded at all times. And this is where this compact forcesium cell comes into place. A very easy recipe actually, and the only thing it does if you uh, right click once, it will collect all the forcesium that you have in your inventory. It doesn't need to be on your hotbar, can be anywhere in your inventory. And it will just keep filling it up. And you can see we have already stored way more than a simple stack of forcesium. Great, and once you are done, you simply put it in there and it will keep going for quite a while actually. A few more things I want to mention about the GUI of the extractor is that you can actually rename it anything you want right here. I'm just going to go with extractor for simplicity's sake. We also have upgrade slots right here and those upgrades are actually very specific for the extractor. You have a capacitor upgrade for the capacity that you can put in here. It stacks up to nine times and it simply ups the storage, the internal buffer of the extractor itself. We also have the booster upgrades right here. They can only go in this slot as well and they will simply make the uh, extraction way faster and more efficient of course. I, it might actually also use a lot more for cesium or energy. I'm not sure about that though. We also have this switch right here. Right now I have it to switch mode, which means I can use my MFFS multi-tool, which is something that you should make uh, as soon as possible when you get started with this mod, the multi-tool, right? Now I have set it to switch. The multi-tool, you can actually switch modes when shift and right clicking. You can see right now there's a field teleporter and I'm gonna get through those modes once we need them. For now we only need the switch mode and uh, since I have it in the switch mode, I can simply switch it on and off, just like that. And you can see right now it's extracting again and now it isn't. 
Alternatively, we could also apply a redstone signal if we wanted to time it, for instance. But since I want to have it run at all times, we are just going to switch it on. So there's one more slot that we left out, namely the power link, but I will get to that in just a second when we have a look at the capacitor. For now, let's have a look at those numbers. You can actually see the work cycle, the current one. Right now it's at 100%. It is uh, filling up once the maximum capacity, which is down at the bottom, is not 100% anymore. So it cannot work all the time because right now we have fed the system with full capacity. And we can see that there are 104 work cycles left before it uh, actually used up the first for cesium. So the next machine we are going to have a look at is the capacitor. Now I want to get to this power link card right from the start. There's a few machines that I need to point out in order to create certain cards that you will need. Now the first card that we are going to need is power link cards and those are created by clicking with a blank card on the capacitor and you can see we have our power link card. Now you will have to do this quite a few times the first time for the extractor and this is right this power card and you can see it remembers the coordinates so in case you move this machine to anywhere else you will also have to create a new power link card. So now that we covered that let's have a look into the capacitor itself. You can of course also name it. You can switch it off and on with redstone or your switch with the multi-tool, however you want. You can see currently we have linked four devices, which simply means we have created four power link cards which are hooked up to another machine linking to this capacitor. So this capacitor is responsible for distributing all of the stored energy to where it's needed. The extractor will bring it over there. Simple as that. Here we can see how much force field energy we have stored and right there we have some upgrade slots. Now I will get to this security station link in just a bit. Let's have, to have a look at the upgrades first. We have the range upgrade. So by default it only has a range of 8 and you can cu currently see that one of my machines, which is this one here, is out of range because of that. So we can stack up to 9 of those range upgrades which will give us a uh, maximum range of 80 blocks, which is quite a bit, I have to say. We also have this capacity upgrade for the capacity itself. Uh, this is the same upgrade that we have in here and it simply adds capacity to our storage system for the force field energy as well. Next up we have the security station. Now this station is especially useful when playing on servers and you don't want other players to interact with your machinery. What you have to do is plot this guy down and you have to make your personal ID card. Now how you do that is actually with your multi-tool. You have to switch it to the personal ID and data link mode. Just like that. And make sure that you have some blank cards in your inventory. Simply right click on an empty spot. Don't click a block. I think it won't work. And you have your personal ID card. And you have to put that in your security station. I have already done that, so you can see everything that I will link to my security station will not be accessible by other players than me. Now in order to hook up other machines to your security station, you simply take a blank card and instead of clicking the capacitor for a power link, you click the security station for a security card link. And the first security card you want to put is in the capacitor, of course, and that means other players cannot tamper with your settings inside this machine. Now not all of the machines have a security upgrade, but uh, a lot of them actually do, as you can see. Now there's a few possibilities to give other players access to your base uh, through the security system. The only thing they have to do is use the multi-tool with the personal ID mode and the blank card in order to create their own personal ID card. And when they give it to you, you can actually place it in your security system and allocate some rights. Now probably the only rights you mostly want to allocate is allow to have their items in the inventory and this mode here to stay in your area. So those guys should be allowed. All other modes are only allowed or should only be allowed if you want the guys to actually tamper with your modular force field system. So for instance they could configure the security rights, they could also remove your MFFS blocks 
they could uh, bypass the force field using the multi-tool and since we are already talking about that let's have a look at the field teleporter I will show you that once we have built our first force field we can actually teleport through the force field using this mode and this would make the other players or your guests able to do that as well uh, they could also open security storage which is another block that we get to in a second they could change protected blocks and that's all stuff you probably don't want except you want them to kind of uh, maintain your MFFS system we also have this validity option which will simply add time to the temporary permission you give now since I am the owner and master of this security system anyways I think I'm not provided with this option but if you put another player's card in there you should be able to raise that by five minutes each click and be aware that the time will count as soon as you take this card out of the station so once you are happy with your rights allocation you can actually take the card out of there and put it into one of those slots and this will give the player access to allocated functions as long as the card remains in there. There's also a validity option which is used for temporary permits and it simply adds or subtracts time to the permit length. Last but not least you can simply copy a personal ID card using a blank one and a normal ID card and you get it immediately. A very simple block I quickly want to cover is the security storage. Now this guy requires a security station link so take a blank card click on the security station and put it right in there. Now that means only people that are allowed from within the security station will be able to access this inventory. So if you remember there was an option for open security storage in the rights allocation that would mean you could allow certain players to open that storage if you wanted to. Can't spell my own name. Also a very useful but rather simple machine is the converter and this guy is actually used to convert the force field energy back into industrial craft 2 energy or if you had it uh, from Billcraft or Universal Electricity you could still put out some Industrial Craft 2 energy and you can see you can actually set the packages that you want to send so for instance I want to send 512 nine packages of those guys so we will fill up this MFSU really really quickly but first of all I have to enable it of course it also requires a power link in order to transfer the power from the capacitor so get the power link and put it in there and if we have a look at the MFE or MFSU you can see it fills up rather quickly. So before we get into the real fun part namely the force fields and the defense system themselves we are gonna have a look at this control system and in here you may also put a security station link so simply make your security station link as shown before and put it in there but you can also make some data link readers. Now those guys you will have to make with your multi-tool using the correct mode, the personal ID and data link coder. Make sure you have a, you know, some blank cards in your inventory and you will click the machines that you want to hook up. So the control system is actually a block that will make you able to access all of your machines remotely and see their GUIs that is pretty nifty so I can simply cl click this capacitor for instance and you can see we have this uh, data link of the capacitor and we simply put it in here and you can store all of the other guys right there and you can see it is linked which mode we have which name it has and what it actually is and we can open the GUI just like that and we could do this from within the range of 80 since we have all these upgrades so that is a pretty handy function I have to say especially if you get really extensive with your systems and have lots and lots of blocks that needs to be managed now let's have a look at the different kinds of force fields we can make the first thing you want to make is actually a projector and I forgot to name this so let's name this projector and what this guy does is actually create the force field depending on the settings you have set in there I'm gonna switch it to the switch mode of my multi-tool right away and one thing we also need to do is create another power link card and put this guy in there now you can see this blue dot this indicates the way the projector currently is facing so it is facing up we might also rearrange this 
differently with a wrench if we wanted to. But for demonstration purposes this will be the best arrangement. The first two force fields we are going to have a look at are the cube and the advanced cube to kind of understand this interface. Now there's a few things where you have to place your items. The kind of force field you want to create goes into this slot right here. And this will open up further options right here. Now you can see the normal cube only gives us the option to put in uh, field modulator upgrades for the distance. So distance goes actually in here. We also have strength which goes in this slot. We also have the focus matrix which goes in any of those slots if they are available. In case of the cube force field we can only increase the distance and that simply means it will add two blocks into both directions so like this we should end up with a 20 by 20 force field I believe. Yeah that looks about right and it also extends underground as soon as I destroy this block it will actually uh, change automatically and extend the force field and I cannot break through that even in creative. So as promised I'm also going to show you the functionality of the field teleporter. For that you will have to put a security card into this slot. So click your with a blank card, click your security station, put your card in there otherwise it's won it won't be possible. But you can use the field teleporter like that. Simply hug a wall and click it. You may also stand on top of the force field and go down just like that. Now the advanced cube will give us a lot more options since we are now able to create a rectangle instead of a perfect cube. You can see the indication for the focus matrices. Uh, this is the same as the blue dot right here as if we were looking from the top of the block. So if we added let's say five of those matrix upgrades in there it should create a wall that is about five of length. right? And we can also create that to the back five switch it on and off again and we have that on both sides. Pretty easy. Now let's do this for all sides but let's go with a lot more for the other side. So something that does not equal a perfect cube but since I don't want to trap myself we are also gonna implement some strength upgrades right here and we are gonna make this about 5 high so it should go 5 high and 5 deep actually. And we enable this. Awesome. Let's have a look at the wall force field. Now the normal wall gives us actually all of the options which means we can create uh, four walls branching out from this point. So I could create a wall going towards this direction. I could also create two walls branching out from the projector just like that. Now you can also manipulate the height of the wall using strength upgrades. So right now it will be 5 high and I can even adjust at which point or where it will start from. So this will shift the whole wall 5 blocks up just like that. The same counts for the diagonal wall. The only difference is that the indication right here now points diagonally. So it is simply the same. Let's create a wall. Let's make it three high and two up from the projector into this direction. Simple as that. Now as for the sphere module we are limited to the distance and strength upgrade as well. It will simply create a sphere so if we right click that we can see it is more or less a sphere as much as it can get in Minecraft. We can increase the radius using the distance upgrade so this should give us a lot larger sphere. Yeah, looks much better. And the strength will, curiously enough, actually increase the density of the wall or the thickness. Just like that. But it will do it uh, inside. As you can see, it comes towards me. The next force field is going to be the tube right there, which only gives us uh, the distance and strength upgrades as well. Now a tube, of course, is a normal tube that surrounds the projector with a wall, basically. And you can add some strength upgrades to increase the height of the tube, just like that. And the distance upgrades will add to the size of the cube. Very nice. 
The next force field, namely the containment, is very similar to the advanced cube. So I made a 5x5 cube with a distance of 2 from the projector and a height of 5. And I'm not entirely sure what the difference between this one and the advanced cube really is. Maybe this one is a little bit stronger and uh, can keep things in there as it is a containment upgrade but uh, it behaves basically the same as the advanced cube otherwise. So the last force field I want to show you is the deflector which will be able to create a platform or a wall depending in which direction it is facing. So right now I want to create a platform that extends five blocks uh, away from me and into both uh, left and right direction and I want this guy to be about uh, five blocks above the, the uh, projector just like that and we enable this and here we go we have our platform now we come to a very very interesting part namely the optional upgrades that you can put in here which will change your force field to do things beyond imagination Alright, so I picked out a few upgrades that I want to show you within this machine. I also want to get to show you the defense station in this video, so I'm not going to go through all the upgrades. I'm going to leave some of you uh, for you to discover, actually. So first of all, we have the camouflage upgrade, which is one of my favorite. Now, this guy will actually open up this slot and we can, for instance, put in a piece of cobblestone activate this and as you can imagine instead of a force field we'll have the respective material and it will act just the same as a force field i cannot get through it even though at some point it might look like that now the touch damage upgrade will of course hit anything that uh, gets into contact with your force field but it is not compatible with the advanced cube for instance to see which upgrades are compatible with what you can shift click and you can see this is not compatible with the advanced cube which is why I cannot put it in here but it is very easy to imagine what it does let's have a look at this block breaker upgrade instead now this guy will take apart everything that's is in the way of your force field and I'm not sure how this is gonna end let's just try it out there we go all the blocks removed so as you can see there is a few more upgrades that I haven't shown you some of them I don't completely understand but I think uh, you you understand how much customization you can give to your force fields that there's just so much to it that you can customize and configure in the way you want it to be. The last block we are going to have a look at is a very very nifty block namely the defense station. Very fun to play around with. You will need a power link card as well as a security link card so just get the power link from here and the security link from there put it in the machine and you are ready to go. You can actually put in your distance upgrades from before in those two slots and what that means is the warning perimeter will actually send a chat message to the player that comes to close, so within three blocks in this case, and the action perimeter will execute the action that we define later on. To do so we actually have to add some of these distance upgrades because that is no perimeter for us. If we add that to the action uh, slot right here it will also automatically add to the warning perimeter but you can also increase the warning perimeter individually in case you want uh, to the, the players to be notified a little bit earlier but make sure the machine is um, onto switch mode and it doesn't run it is indicated with red lights and now we can actually change the mode the action mode you can see the action mode is always red and the inform mode is blue. So this will kill everything and gather the equipment in this guy. You can actually also add an adjacent security storage to give uh, to expand this inventory kind of. I think it will automatically um, go into the uh, storage there once the inventory is full. But anyways, we can also search the uh, players uh, inventory and remove banned items. Now the items that I have banned I uh, have to put up here. You can also switch that to items allowed which means if I put for instance a 
some food in there, the only item that is allowed for the players is that food. And if they come within the action perimeter, it will take everything else out of the inventory. And banned, of course, it will only take what is banned of them. We can also have the NPC kill, which will leave any players around alive, but kill the NPCs. We can only kill hostile NPCs or friendly NPCs if we wanted to, and those are basically all of the modes. So very easy to understand, and I just love the system, for instance, of the item gathering, so when it kills a player, it will also gather the items. Alright guys, this has been it for today's Spotlight. I think I covered most of the machinery and upgrades in this mod. There are still a few that I haven't covered, but just follow the link in the description if you want to find out about those from the Industrial Craft Wiki. Other than that, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed it, it would be awesome if you considered leaving a like or some feedback. Other than that, have a great time and see you next time. Bye bye.